Hello viewers, uh, welcome back to the course on matrix computation and uh, its application. So, in the previous lecture we have discussed uh, about the vector spaces and their basis. So, today we are going to start with the another thing that uh, what will happen when we are going to have orthonormal basis. So, that is what we are going to uh, discuss today. So, today we are going to discuss about the orthonormal basis. So, what is that? So, till now we have a vector space, we have discussed with the vector space V that is defined on the given field and from there we know that we have a basis B that is made up of the vectors V1, V2, Vk. So, this is the basis for vector space V, it means that the dimension of V is K. Now, we know that this is the basis then these V i's are linearly independent and B spans V. So, this is what we have uh, seen till now. Now, you have seen that whenever we want to show that for any vector say I call it x that belongs to V. If I need to write that x as a linear combination of this vector C 2 V 2 and C k V k then we need to find these coordinates and I know that I can write the coordinate of this x with respect to basis. So, this is a c 1, c 2, c k. Now, finding these coordinates is a very cumbersome job because whenever we have a large number of system like we have a v with the dimension may be 10. So, in that case we will to solve this x and to find this coordinate c 1, c 2, c k we need to solve the system of 10 by 10 matrix and then with that one we will be able to find this value. So, in fact, in the real life we may have a very large number of a very large system. So, in that case finding this coordinates is really a very tough job. So, to get rid of this one we take a alternative and that alternatives we are going to discuss is based on orthonormal basis. So, let us see what is uh, we are going to have from here. Now, so I will start with just simple theory about orthonormal basis. So, suppose we have two vectors v 1 and v 2. So, that belongs to the vector space v. Now, I will say that v 1 and v 2 are orthogonal to each other. It means that if I take the dot product v 1 dot v 2 so, this is we are talking about dot product or I can also call it inner product. So, if I take the dot product of two vectors and if this is going to be 0, then we say that this vectors v 1 and v 2 are orthogonal to each other and also we call it now, based on this one, I know that we can find the magnitude of the vector. Sometime we also write like this one. So, this is a basically a symbol of norm. So, this is we can represent by V 1 taking the dot product of V 1 itself and then taking the under root. So, that is the basically magnitude of the vector v 1 or we also call it 
length of the vector v 1 or magnitude of vector v 1. So, what do we do that? Now, I take any vector v 1 and I will divide by its magnitude. So, now whatever the vector we are getting, so this will be can be written as hat. So, this is called normalized vector. So, it is a normalized vector and if you see now then its length is 1. So, what we have done? We have taken a vector divided by its magnitude. So, that process is called the normalization. So, we have normalized the vector and then its magnitude become 1. And this vector v 1 and v 2 already was orthogonal. So, now from here v 1 and v 2. So, now what I do is that Now, if vector v 1 and v 2 are orthogonal first one, second and v 1 magnitude is equal to 1 that is equal to v 2 magnitude is 1 or the length is 1, then from these two we call it that set v 1 and v 2. is an ortho, ortho coming from the orthogonal and normal means it is normalized. So, it is called an is an orthonormal set. Okay. It means the set the v 1 and v 2 orthogonal and their magnitude is 1. So, then it is called orthonormal set. Now, the question comes that how we can talk about the basis that. So, for example, suppose I take a vector for example, I take a vector we talk about R 2 then let I uh, take V 1 1 vector and I suppose I take 1 minus 1 and V 2 I just take 1 1. Now, if you take the magnitude of this vector, so it is 1 square plus minus 1 square under the root, so it is under 2. So, it is its magnitude is not 1. Similarly, if I take the magnitude of V 2 that is also under 2. Now, I divide by this one, so maybe I can call it u 1 now. So, u 1 is I will take the v 1 and divide by under root 2. So, it is 1 by under root 2 and minus 1 by under root 2. And similarly, I can construct my u 2. So, that is 1 by root 2 and 1 by root 2. So, these two vectors are normalized now. This is normalized vectors. Also, now I just check what will happen to. So, or there is no uh, difference between orthogonality. Now, what I am going to do is that I will check from here uh, v 1 dot v 2. So, if you see from v 1 dot v 2, we are taking the dot product. So, dot product is component wise. So, I will call it 1 into 1 plus minus 1 into 1. So, that is 1 minus 1 that will be 0 or I can write from here u 1 dot u 2. So, that is 1 by root 2 into 1 by root 2 the first component multiplying plus minus 1 by root 2 into 1 by root 2 and that is 1 by 2 minus 1 by 2 and that is 0. 
So, in this case we can call it that these two vectors, so vectors u1 and u2 are orthonormal. It means they are orthogonal and their magnitude is 1. So, now from here this is become the orthonormal set. So, this dot product if you see from here then this dot product I can write in this form also. So, this is a in the vector form we know that how to take the dot product, but what I can do is that I can uh, write this dot product in terms of matrices because we know that the matrices. So, V 1 is the vector. So, I call it because a vector V we always take in the column form like this one we have taken and V 1 transpose if I take that will be a row vector. So, this dot product I can write as V 1 transpose multiplied by V 2. So, this is basically matrix multiplication. So, I can write from here that what is V 1 t? V 1 t a will be a row vector. So, this is 1 minus 1 and V 2 t is 1 1 column vector. So, this is the matrix of 1 cross 2 and this is a matrix 2 cross 1. Now, if I uh, multiply those these matrix, so this will multiply by this one. So, it will be 1 minus 1 and that will be 0 because we know that this is orthogonal. So, this dot product we can also uh, write in this form. So, that is the multi uh, matrix uh, multiplication and this is a vector dot product, but the things are same. So, after uh, doing this one, now the question is that Now, from, from here I can say that this V 1 and V 2 are orthonormal vectors. Then what about linear independence? The question is that is, is the set V 1 V 2 linearly independent? because if we discuss about the orthonormal basis then we know that it should be linearly independent. So, let us check that whether this V 1 and V 2 are ortho, uh, linearly independent or not. Okay, so, this one I can uh, just check. So, by contradiction we can say by contradiction. So, let V 1 and V 2 are linearly dependent L D. It means a one vector, so I can write vector V 2 I can write as a some scalar multiple of V 1 where alpha is not equal to 0. Okay. So, I am taking V 1 and V 2 any orthonormal vectors. So, it means that V 1 is 1 and V 2 is 1. So, I can say that let V 1 and V 2 are orthonormal vectors. Now, so this is I have written. Now, I take the dot product V 1 dot product V 2. So, I can write here V 1 dot product alpha V 1 because V 2 is alpha V 1 and from here I can take this alpha common. So, it can be written as V 1 dot V 1. Now, from here I can add this as alpha and V 1 magnitude square. So, but V 1 and V 2 are orthonormal vectors. So, I know that it should be equal to 0 because V 1, V 2 are orthonormal. 
So, from here which implies that alpha and v 1 square that should be equal to 0. Now, we know that alpha is not 0. So, neither alpha is 0 nor. So, if I take the magnitude is equal to 0, then we know that its magnitude is 1. So, I can say from here that this magnitude is neither alpha is 0 nor v is 0. So, from here I can say that which implies that uh, v 1 and v 2 cannot be linearly dependent. So, from here we can say that the vector v 1 and v 2 are linearly independent. It means if I take the vectors two vectors which are orthonormal then definitely they will be linearly independent to each other. So, this is a very important uh, result of the linear independency. Now, so the question comes that suppose we have a vector space v over the field f and so this is a vector space and now from here I call it finite dimensional. So, suppose its dimension of v u is n. So, it is a finite dimensional space over the field f. Now, what I do is that I take a basis b u 1 u 2 u n. Okay. So, let this is an ortho normal basis of vector space v. Okay. Because here we are talking about n dimensional vector space and I am taking the basis of direct this one. So, we generally we are talking about the square type of matrices, but it, it can be a, suppose if I take the dimension of u is n and if we take the basis which contain the vectors less than n, then you know that this basis will create a subspace of v. So, but now we are taking that it is an orthogonal basis of vector v. Now, from here, so which implies that that b is linearly independent also and which also implies that that u i dot product u j that is equal to 0 when i is not equal to j and if it is same elements then it will be 1 because it is a orthonormal basis. So, that is there. Now, I want to see that because we know that this is a linear independent. Now, what is going to happen now? Let us check that how it is useful for finding the coordinates. So, let we take any vector x belongs to the vector space v. So, then I can write as x can be written as linear combination of c 1 u 1 c 2 u 2 and c n u n. So, I can write this linear combination because these are basis and I know that this will be uniquely determined. So, we need to find the value of c 1 c 2 this one. So, I can call it 1. Now, so it is a vector. So, I want to find c 1 c 2. So, for this one what I know uh, I will do that. So, I will define the x this vector taking the dot product with u 1. I define like this one. So, it is a dot product of x with u 1. So, x is this one. So, I can write it c u c 2 u 2 c n u n. So, this is my vector taking the dot product with u 1. 
now we know that in the dot product suppose I have a vectors u plus v taking the dot product with w. So, it can be written as u dot product w plus v dot product w and I know also know that alpha we are talking about the real scalars. So, alpha u taking the dot product with w that can be written as u w. So, this is real scalars we are talking about. So, that we already know this property. So, from here I can write like this one. So, this will be equal to c 1 u 1 u 1 taking the dot product plus c 2 u 2 u 1 and I can write from here c n this will be u n taking the dot product with u 1. Now, I know that this is the normal orthonormal basis. So, from here I know that this is 0, this is 0. So, all other term will be 0 except, so this one can be written as c 1 and this is u 1 taking the dot product of u 1. So, I can write from here that this is equal to u 1 square. Now, I am taking the orthonormal basis. So, this quantity is 1. So, from here I will get c 1. So, from this I can say from this that my c 1 is taking the x dot product with u 1. So, that is my c 1. Similarly, similarly to find c 2, what I do? I take the dot product of x with u 2. So, it is the same way we will go, it is c 1 u 1, c 2 u 2 and c n u uh, n taking the dot product with u 2. So, ultimately if you see from here the same way we will go, then we will get c 2 u square only left with this one. All other terms will be cancelled out the same way because they are orthonormal basis. So, this means the orthonormal basis means that if you choose any two vectors from here different vector their dot product will be 0 and if you take the same one. So, it will be 1. So, that is the meaning of this orthonormal basis. So, from here I will k that is my c 2 is x dot u 2. So, from this way I can find. So, similarly I can find so in the similarly we can have or we can find c 3 is equal to x taking the dot product with x 3, c 4 is equal to u 4 and so on, c n will be taking the dot product of x with u n. So, from here now this equation 1. So, equation 1 can be written as I can write x. Now, c 1 I know it is x into u 1. So, I can write from here it is x dot u 1 u 1 plus x dot u 2 u 2 plus x dot product with u n this is equal to u n. So, by this way we are able to find the coordinates of a vector very easily because here just we are taking a dot product and that is it we are able to do that one. So, now from here you can see that my coordinates of x with respect to the basis are simply x dot u 1 x dot u 2 x taking the dot product u n this one. This 
So, this is the advantage of dealing with the orthonormal basis. So, let us uh, take one example. So, in this example I will just take uh, some orthonormal basis. So, let us take I take a vector vector space r cube and I choose the basis. So, I just take v 1 I will take 0 1 0 v 2 will take minus 4 by 5 0 3 by 5 and v 3 we are taking 3 by 5 0 4 by 5. Okay. So, this is a vector I am uh, taken from here. Now, you can see from here that v 1 if you see its magnitude is 1, v 2 is also its magnitude is 16 by 25 plus 9 by 25. So, it is 1, v 3 that is also 9 by 25 plus 16 by 25 under root. So, that is equal to 1. It means these are normalized vector and also you can see from here that v 1 dot product v 2 is 0 plus 0 plus 0 that is 0 the first two vectors component wise dot product. Now, v 2 v 3 so that will give me minus 4 12 over 25 0 plus 12 by 25 and that is 0. Similarly, v 1 dot v 3 if you take then this is 0 plus 0 plus 0 that is 0. It means that these vectors are orthogonal to each other. So, they are mutual orthogonal and their magnitude is 1. So, I can say that these are the orthonormal basis. So, this is I can call it ortho normal basis of R 3. Now, suppose I choose, so let us take one. So, let us say consider a vector x from R 3. So, I call it suppose 1 1 I take that belongs to R 3. Now, I want to find x c 1 v 1 plus c 2 v 2 plus c 3 v 3. So, now I know that my c 1 is basically taking the dot product of x with v 1 and x is my 1 1 1 taking the dot product with 0 1 0. So, if you see from here then it is 0 1 and 0. So, it is 1. So, my C 1 is 1. C 2 x taking dot product with V 2. So, it is 1 1 1 taking the dot product with minus 4 by 5 0 3 by 5. So, it will be minus 4 by 5 plus 3 by 5. So, it is minus 1 by 5 and my C 3 will be taking the dot product. So, it will be 3 by 5 0 minus 4 by 5 not minus it is plus. So, it will be equal to 3 by 5 plus 4 by 5 that is 7 by 5. So, from here you can say that my x is equal to v 1 
minus 1 by 5 v 2 plus 7 by 5 v 3. So, this is the linear combination we can write and these are the coordinates we have taken. So, from here the coordinate of x or maybe I can just call it that coordinate of vector 1 1 1 with respect to the so, I can call it this as a basis orthomer basis. So, I just call it B with respect to B is just 1 minus 1 by 5 7 by 5. So, that is the answer of this question. So, it is very uh, convenient for us to find out the coordinates or the vector x with respect to the orthonormal basis. So, that is the one of the advantage of taking the orthonormal basis. Also, if you see from here, this orthonormal vectors if I am taking. So, what I am going to do is that I will make a matrix made up of this basis. So, I just take here V 1 first column, then V 2 and V 3. So, I call write this matrix. So, it is 0 1 0 minus 4 by 5 0 3 by 5 and then in the last it is 3 by 5 0 4 by 5. So, this matrix we have taken. I call it matrix may be u. Now, if you see from here, we have already seen that this columns, these vectors are orthonormal. So, it means that if I take the dot product of these columns, then this is going to be 0. So, this vector I can from here I can say that this is my column 1, column 2, column 3. So, if I take the dot product of these columns, so these columns are mutually orthogonal. columns are mutually orthogonal and their magnitude is 1 that we already know. Now, we call it R 1, R 2, R 3 this uh, uh, row vectors. So, why now we are calling the row vector. So, what about this one? Now, if you see from here this 0 minus 4 by 5 3 by 5. So, if I take the dot product of R 1 with R 2. So, if you see from here it is 0 plus 0 plus 0. So, that is 0. I call it R 1 dot R 3. So, R 1 dot R 3 that is 0 and then from here it is minus 12 by 5 and it is plus 12 by 5. So, it is again 0 and R 2 dot R 3 if I take then it is 0 plus 0 plus 0 that is 0. So, it means that in this case my columns are mutually orthogonal to each other as well as the rows are also mutually orthogonal to each other. So, such type of matrix if you get then from here you will see that u is an orthogonal matrix. So, what is the orthogonal matrix? So, orthogonal matrix is that in which the columns are orthogonal to each other and rows are also orthogonal to each other and the magnitude of each columns is or the rows is 1. So, that is the definition of orthogonal matrix. So, this is the orthogonal matrix and now from here starting with the orthogonal matrix what I am going to do is that. So, orthogonal matrix I am taking. Now, if you see from here u transpose u. So, this is what we are going to find out. Now, u transpose will be this one. 
So, taking these, so it will be 0 minus 4 by 5, 3 by 5, 1, 0, 0, 0, 3 by 5, 4 by 5. And then taking the u itself, Four by five. I am taking the dot product. So if we just take the product of this matrices, so this is this. So it is going to be one because this will the same vector we are multiplying. Now the first co column and the, this second row is zero. This that is also zero. Now from here the same thing I am going to do here. So, it will be 0. This vector and this, this vector are same. So, its magnitude should be 1. These are orthogonal 0, 0, 1. So, it is my identity matrix or dimension 3. Now, the same thing I can uh, verify that what will happen if I take u, u transpose. So, in this case if you see then this is my same matrix. I can write here once again 0, 3 by 5, 4 by 5 and it will be 0 minus 4 by 5, 3 by 5. So, if I multiply this vector with this vector, so it is 1. Now, this vector multiplying by this uh, row, so it will be 0. So, it will be 0, 0, then 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. So, from these two, you can see that which implies now that u transpose u is equal to i and that is also equal to u transpose. So, this is possible. So, from here I can say that the inverse of u that is equal to u transpose. So, that is another advantage of dealing with the orthonormal basis that whenever we, uh, we have a matrix made up of orthonormal basis, then in that case if you want to take the inverse that is just the transformation transpose of the given matrix. So, it is also very easy to find out the transpose of a matrix as compared to finding the inverse of the matrix. And from here also I just want to find the determinant of this. So, if you see the determinant I want to find. So, it will be 0, 1, 0. So, I can just it will be minus 1. I just take uh, this one going from the first row I am first column. So, it is I am taking this one. So, this and this. So, it will be minus 16 by 25 minus 16 by 25 because I am considering this minus. So, minus and minus minus 9 by 25 that becomes minus <coughs> minus 25 by 25 and that is 1. So, from here you see that this is equal to 1. And these things we can check from here also. Since u transpose u is equal to i and we know that that matrix u transpose taking the determinant is same as the determinant of the matrix. So, from here if I take the determinant determinant of i is 1 always. 
Now, if I take two matrix and determinant that is equal to determinant of A and determinant of B. So, that should be equal to determinant of square that should be equal to 1. And from here, I can say that this is equal to always this plus minus 1. So, it means that the orthogonal matrix are always having the determinant either plus 1 or equal to minus 1. So, this is the some properties of the orthogonal matrix that is made up of the orthonormal basis. So, that is why it is this matrix is called the orthogonal matrix. So, I will stop here. So, today we have discussed about the orthonormal vectors and orthonormal basis and then we talk about the orthogonal matrix. So, we will continue with this one in the next lecture also. So, thanks for watching and uh, thanks very much.